Welcome to Life Happens, where Texans come to protect their legacy and prepare for the second half of life. Join your host, Attorney Kim Hegwood of Your Legacy Legal Care, and our weekly guest as we navigate the challenges that emerge as life happens. Now here's your host, Kim Hegwood. Welcome to Life Happens with me, Kim Hegwood, and our very special guest today is Sojourner King. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And so you have a business called Home Care for the 21st Century. So we're going to yes. we're going to talk about some fun things that is really going to be helpful um, for clients. And we're talking about today combining hands on care with technology. And so so your company does something different. Um, talk to us a little bit about what that involves. Yeah, so um, what well, we are focused on uh, continuation of care where uh, we have the home care agency when well when patients or family members when they contact us they will um be enrolled in our home care program plus our telehealth program and with that we um, offer a continuation of service plan um it's combined with physical care and uh virtual care so we want to make sure that even though caregiver leaves, the nurse leaves, they'll still continue to have that 24-7 um, help and assistance. So so how does that work exactly? Uh, you have a home care company, so somebody comes in for, what, maybe just a few hours a day, and then the telemark, telehealth kind of combines with that? Tell, kind of Kind of walk me through how that works. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, when they enroll, then they have that... Uh, as you mentioned, if it's even four hours or eight hour of care, then, but they will still get the 24 um, seven, they will be assigned a remote care coordinator. And this is a virtual 24 seven emergency dispatch who is almost like a caregiver, actually, a medical team. So, um, and then we set up also a fall alert uh, device it's uh, not intrusive, so it's it, there's no cameras, uh, no videos. You can't hear or any. It, it's a sensory, like when you walk into to a bathroom, mm -hmm. and then it um, the lights come on, or even in a room. That's all it is. And with that, it uh, detects like falls, change of behavior, um, and and then also we assign them a care coordinator who they get to know. And um, and then what they do is they will either the patient or family member, you know, elderly client who may not be able to use a um, tablet or Internet or anything like that. So they could call them and um, and talk to them about, you know, what their concerns are, uh, you know, just different questions that pinpoint or if they need help with uh, picking up their prescription, they will coordinate that or. Um, do they have enough food in the house? If they need, you know, help with grocery shopping, they'll help with that too, with the coordination. And then also we just make it, you know, affordable for them as well, because nobody can't afford 24 seven care. So that's how the virtual care um, comes in. And then also the fall detection. So we have that too. Wow, that sounds awesome. And so, <laughs> So we talk, I think you said something about, you know, if somebody's coming home from a hospital visit, um, how does this work with, you know, the, for what happened, you know, for what kind of things need to be done from when a person leaves the hospital as far as that continual care? Yeah. Um, so we, um, <clears throat> we assign them <clears throat> a care uh, coordinator who will um, coordinate with, you know, the doctor or if it's a social worker or even with our agency where we make sure that the um, vitals are being met, any, you know, medical condition that they have that they're concerned with. And then we um, what they do is type up a like a care plan of what they you know, what they needed and how, you know, if it's quarterly or, you know, maybe the doctor or the medical team needs wants to know more information monthly or daily, we're able to fax that report in um, <clears throat> to the medical team or even the family members as well. Because we've had a uh, family who are in California and we're here in Texas and they're really, really concerned if their you know, parent is gonna fall 
or they're worried about their condition, but they will get that report um, of the screening. I think you mentioned earlier that it doesn't require the use of uh, a tablet. So I guess yes. if a senior is not good with technology, um, you know, they don't have to be good with technology. How do they access it? Do they talk? Do they have to push a button? Kind of walk me through of how that works. All right. Yeah, definitely. Great question. Um, so we have different ways they could use, um, you know, you could download the app. It's a smartphone or a tablet, even an old, you know, um, old tablet. So they could access it that way. Or they could also, um, the outreach, they will do a, a phone call. They will call them if they're not unwilling to use um, a smart device or uh, if they have like their home phone or their cell phone, they'll call them and say, you know, hey, Miss Jones, um, get on the, we need to, you know, we need to take your blood pressure or your, um, even to weigh, weigh yourself and then they record it that way. So there's a, you know, just a different um, ways to help them. And then we'll also be there to help them. Um, and then, you know, they do blood pressure, weight. So they'll have all that equipment. Usually individuals will have all that equipment to um, be able to um, take their vitals. So there's, you know, like I said, they could do it over the phone. They could call them or a tablet. So there's just, uh, or even um, a computer. So it just depends. So various ways. Good. So, uh, so how long uh, does this process, you know, last as far as the check-in service from the remote care coordinator? Is it from however long y'all are on board, or is it more than that? How does that uh, remote care coordinator? How does that continue, or is it all part of just the plan while you're on services with you? Can you tell clients how that would work? Uh, yes, it is part of a, um, our, our, our plan, so it will continue on, you know, as long as they're using our services. Okay. And, um, and how does it work as far as, you know, if the caregiver's not there and they detect a fall, right? You said they uh -huh. do that. How do you contact the family, you know, maybe in that instance, or if, you know, things change, how, how does the how does a communication work, you know, between, um, you know, the, the system that you have, the remote coordinator, family, you know, because I'm sure this is a question that families, you know, want to know, how do we get information and how often do they get information was probably a good question as well. Yeah. So when, um, when they originally enroll, we will uh, have questions. Uh, we'll take a, like a um, assessment. A, yeah. Assessment on, how they want to be notified, how, you know, frequently they want to be notified. So, you know, some might say, I want to be um, notified, you know, like I said, daily, or, you know, um, if it's escalating, um, if there's like an emergency, then we'll be able to, um, to, you know, contact them as well. So we're pretty flexible when it comes to that. And then um, a, uh, another thing is like if a, if a family says, you know what, I'm concerned with my mom not taking her medication at nine, you know, 9 p.m. So we're, you know, the care coordinator will call them at nine o'clock and say, Miss um, Robin, did you take your medication? And then if they're, you know, or or they will may ask them um, about did you eat today? Or if they say, no, have you fallen? They may say, you know, yes, I fought a couple of times. Then, you know, we'll, we'll know. So we'll, there's many ways to notify the families. So it could be either if they want to, you know, be emailed, called or faxed, we'll be able to do that. And then lastly, I forgot to mention that. Um, so if they're, you know, we're able to detect like if it's an emergency um, and we either is up to the family member or even um, the individual how they want us to be able to respond. So say that they fail and we detect that, then we'll be able to contact the, um, you know, if they said, hey, call the neighbor if some if there's an emergency. So we'll be 
be able to call the neighbor and say, hey, uh, Mr. Jones, we noticed that he's on the floor. He's not answering um, his phone. So the neighbor will be able to go over there or contact the family. If not, we will call 911. And also, you know, continue to, we always, it's all about, you know, just we all work as a team. So I know in, in my practice, I, I got involved in, in elder law, you know, uh, out of necessity, um, right. taking care of, you know, of my grandparents. Um, and I find that a lot of people in this industry have a story mm-hmm. as far as, you know, why they do what they do. And so, and um, what's yours? Um, well, I just kind of remember watching my, um, my grandmother taking care of her sister. And I, when I was five years old, I didn't, you know, I didn't really understand. Uh, she suffered from Alzheimer, dementia, um, and I just watched her be able to, you know, care for her until she was, until she passed away. And and, and then as I got older, I just, all my families, uh, I come from a background of family, you know, they take care of their family members. It could be, you know, mom, mom you know, aunt, grandma, so, and then in 1996, I went on and got my um, CNA license, certified nursing assistants. So um, I enjoyed, you know, I enjoyed helping people who are, you know, um, elderly or disabled, just that, that needs the extra help. Because I want to be able to be treated when, when I need help. I'm hoping, you know, the good karma will come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate and then I'm also, that. Yeah. And then I'm also, I'm just really, really excited about uh, that technology opportunity as well, because um, a story I have uh, about five years ago, uh, somebody close to me had, um, she lived alone. She passed away. And I wish we had that virtual caregiver and the fall detection monitoring device there because, you know, they didn't find her for what, uh, 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, that's always sad. And so, for yeah, sure. So. And so. Mm-hmm. All right. So, if somebody wants to uh, get involved with your home care because they like the technology, how do they find you? Yes. Um, they could call us at um, our office phone number is 832 328 Perfect. And then um, we have our website is uh, www.homecareforthe21stcentury.com slash forward slash west dash Houston dash TX. Perfect. And so, well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. I love learning uh, new things that help, you know, our seniors be able to stay in, in the home longer. And so it sounds like you have a a really good program in place and we look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Thank you for having me. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Life Happens with Kim Hegwood. Be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. wherever you listen to your podcast as we navigate through the challenges that emerge as life happens. The content of this podcast does not establish an attorney-client relationship or constitute attorney-client privilege, legal, medical, financial, or any other professional advice.